This is the anthem. Here's what you came for. Welcome to the Disney Beat, a podcast brought to you by the DizInsider.com. My name is Sean Nyberg, and I will be covering all of the Disney headlines to keep you informed as you start your week. Hello there, this is Sean Nyberg, and this podcast is being recorded on the evening of Sunday, November 8th, 2020. All right, let's do this, guys. Let's start right off with uh, Disney Parks news. So with the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim and Disneyland Paris being closed, along with the Walt Disney World Resort operating at limited capacity with shortened hours, there's not been a ton of news out there regarding the parks, but we did get an announcement regarding the planned opening of Buena Vista Street in Disney California Adventure. A few weeks ago, we reported that Disney plans to increase the size of downtown Disney by opening the main retail and restaurant section of DCA. This will increase downtown Disney's maximum capacity, it'll provide more options for shopping and dining, and it'll give Disney park fans a little taste of being in the actual parks. The planned expansion is set to begin on November 19th just in time for the holidays. And while this move is small, it will help increase revenue for the Disney company and it allows them to rehire a couple hundred cast members to work the shops and eateries, which is always um, always really good news, especially with a lot of the layoffs that's been going on. So anything that gets people back to work, right? We uh, also took a look at all the projects going on at the Disneyland Resort over at thedizinsider.com. My fellow theme park journalist over there, Sean Williams, spelled Sean, S-H-A-W-N, unlike mine, S-E-A-N, and we will leave it up to you to decide that my spelling is correct. Um, He uh, reported uh, this list um, of ongoing projects For the websites, the list of projects was originally cultivated by the local newspaper around Disneyland, the Orange County Register. It's like the newspaper, you know, they call it the OC Register. It's really actually has a really good uh, beat on what's going on inside the Disney parks just because they've been around and they're the local paper and they just have good sources. So the list here was based on official press releases from the Disney company. Also information pulled from permits that the Disney parks has filed with the County and uh, along with updates that uh, the sources within the company has uh, provided us in terms of ongoing projects. So here's a list of 20 uh, of the projects going on and you can read more details over at the Diz Insider if you'd like to. So, First, we've got uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. That is the ride out in uh, Toontown. It's the construction for that has gone vertical. Um, we reported on that a couple weeks ago. Um, yep, it's the same dark ride that uh, opened in Walt Disney World earlier this year. So that's going on. Uh, there's a Haunted Mansion refurb that started uh, early in this year before they shut down the parks. Um, they're just you know, painting, they're just kind of updating stuff. No big changes there. Snow White Scary Adventure in Fantasyland, they're doing a reefer, but they're also making some big changes, especially to the end of that ride. It's gonna um it's not gonna end so dramatic and so quick. You know, there's gonna be a little bit of more of a resolution. You're gonna feel um a little bit better because it's such a dark ride. And so they're kind of taking out, not taking out the scary elements, but adding some better uh, feel good elements to it. They're also changing some of the paint on the front. Uh, King Arthur's carousel in uh, Fantasyland is getting um, a refurb. They've been doing a lot of work on that. That also um, shut down prior to the COVID-19 shutdowns. The Indiana Jones adventure is getting a refurb that seems like it's just going to be some stuff they're going to do behind the scenes. That, uh, you know, we probably won't notice as a guest, but stuff that just needs to be done to the ride to keep it going. Um, over in Toontown again, Mickey's uh, Mickey's house, they're going to, they're refurbing the roof of it. Um, just, you know, freshening it up and getting it uh, uh, really, you know, uh, getting re- they're really getting Toontown ready for um, the 2023 uh, opening of Runaway Railway. And if you guys have been out there in Toontown in a while, it needs some love, you know. Um, they also just did a over a million dollar uh, addition to Space Mountain. They added um, nothing exciting to the ride, unfortunately, um, or fortunately, because everyone loves that ride. But um, they added a new stairway exit um, 
to uh, the ride. So they had been working on that again in early 2020. It looks like it should be done by now. Um, they did number eight, Gadget's Go Coaster, which is the, um, you know, the the smaller uh, roller coaster over in Toontown. That's going to get uh, freshened up a little bit. They're finishing up. They have a, they redid the Tomorrowland entrance in uh, earlier this year. They completely redid the entrance, and it looks like they're gonna. Um, they either have or they're about to remove the remaining French fry rocks. You know, French fry rocks. That's what they call them, um, as part of the uh, new Tomorrowland that came in the late '90s that was much derided. And so they um, are finally going to remove all those rocks, and um, they're going to update the planters too. Um, you can look for um, some of the concept art for that entrance. It looks pretty pretty amazing. So. Um, I'll hurry up a little bit more. Uh, number 10, they're going to, they've widened the, uh, entrance into Frontierland, Um, and they replace the 15 foot high gates that use that, you know, when you enter that are on the sides, it's, they've really, uh, made that much bigger and, uh, completely replaced the gates, the parade route that is between sleeping beauty's castle and the Matterhorn. Um, that entire area is just getting, um, it's getting renovated. It's just getting freshened up. It's getting, um, cleaned up they are putting a new roof they're re-roofing this uh, cider mill and blacksmith shop over on tom sawyer's island they are doing maintenance in the loading area of the matterhorn bobsleds they're putting or they put a fresh coat of paint on the emporium on main street usa so they had a uh, scaffolding up for all the painting all the scaffolding's down it looks great unfortunately no one can go in there <laughs> but we know it'll be uh, ready for us when we can uh, number 15 they're um, in the very early phases of the Splash Mountain retheme to Princess and the Frog. So we announced that earlier in the summer that they are going to retheme Splash Mountain away from its current theming right now, which is based on the Song of the South movie. A very, you know, we'll just call it here. You know, it was very, it was a racist movie that was done, and it was um, very problematic. Even though the ride really doesn't have any of those elements in it. Disney has decided to go in a different route and they're going to retheme it based on the movie princess and the frog. And so while they haven't done any actual changes to the ride yet, we expect that to be a full shutdown when they do it. They are in the pre uh, in the planning phases uh, right now to get that done. So over in California adventure, the Avengers campus is continuing to be built in California over there. It took over uh, uh, the bug, a bugs land, the bugs land, and it was actually supposed to be opened, you know, early in June. But obviously, with everything going on, it's not, and it really slowed down construction. So that's still going on. Um, number seventeen, a new uh, administrative building is being built uh, backstage over at DCA behind Luigi's Rock and Roads, uh, Rollick and Roadsters. There's just some routine update maintenance going on over at Mater's Junkyard Jamboree, the Pixar Pal around. Uh, you know, the big Ferris wheel that many consider the scariest ride in all of the Disney parks. Um, it's just getting some routine maintenance and some of the stationary gondolas have been removed so they can just be freshened up. And finally, the Hyperion Theater in um, California, uh, California Adventure there at the end of the Hollywood. Um, it, it just got a fresh paint. So the whole cloudscape there, it's all freshly painted and looks really nice. And it's just ready to have some visitors. So um while there's still no reopening date planned for uh, the park, we are just going to stay on top of all these changes and keep you guys posted. You know, as COVID-19 cases continue to spike around the country, it does not appear that we will have uh, an opening an opening date anytime soon for those Anaheim parks. So that's it for the Disney Parks news. We're going to bounce over. Um, before we get to Disney Plus, though, you know, remember... Disney owns a lot of different um, networks. You know, they own ABC. Obviously, they own the Disney Channel. They own Freeform. And they also own ESPN. Some of you guys might not know that. Disney owns ESPN. And sadly, though, this last week, it was announced that Disney plans to lay off around 300 people from ESPN as the company, uh, as the Disney company continues to prioritize their streaming services. And that includes uh, not just Disney Plus and Hulu, but it includes ESPN Plus, which is their, you know, their streaming service for ESPN. So uh, some of the layoffs were due to COVID-19, but many of them were just simply due to a change in direction from the um, just the sports network by itself. So the layoffs will uh, it also will include some on air talent. So if you are someone who watches ESPN often, you might see um 
some of the layoffs from some of the people that you're used to seeing. Um, some of those on-air talents whose contracts are expiring here soon. Um, it's been announced they're not going to be um, asked uh, to come back. So, you know, it looks like a lot of these layoffs are just across the board and in all the different areas. But um, over at Disney Plus, the one area, not the one area, but uh, the primary area right now in the Disney company that is really doing well Um as we reported earlier, Disney Plus is developing a new series based on the movie The Mighty Ducks. So, you know, if you're of my generation, you know that movie well. Um, I'm sure if you're of any generation, you know that movie well. But it was it came out when I was a kid, and um, it's just fun to see that they're going to make a series based on it. Uh, this is going to be a 10-episode series that is set uh, in present-day Minnesota. And we received news this last week that the franchise star, Emilio Estevez, Emilio Estevez, he has been signed on to direct an episode for the series, which is kind of cool. Um, the series is currently being filmed in Vancouver, BC. So that's pretty cool. We don't have a release date on that yet, but um, there's another new series being developed for Disney Plus that's based on a previously released hit movie. This time it is Pixar's Cars. So... I know, right? There's going to be a series for Pixar's car. So for over a year now, there has been whispering um, that Disney is developing a series surrounding the hit movie for their streaming service. And it has been reported this last week that the high that the uh, alum and the star of High School Musical, Corbin Blue, Corbin Blue from High School Musical, he has joined the series as the character Cam Spinner, Cam Spinner, a character that briefly appeared in Cars Three. So uh, Blue will be joined by uh, a cast that we've already known about, Cristela Alonso, who's going to play Cruz Ramirez. And, of course, Larry the Cable Guy, who is reprising his role as Lightning McQueen's best friend, Mater. So uh, there's no release date announced as the series is still in development. And so uh, once we get any more information on this, of course, we're going to share it because we're all very interested to see a Cars series for Disney+. Plus. There is a, um, a uh, there also in Disney Plus series news. There is a one day filming break, um, a little scary scary episode uh, last week. There is a, a one day filming break for the upcoming Disney Plus series entitled Big Shot. Big Shot. As one of the members of the production team um, tested positive for COVID nineteen. Fortunately, which you don't normally hear that after you hear that that first sentence, uh, the test ended up actually being a false positive, and the production picked back up uh, after the one day break. Now, while that in itself might not sound like a news story or something worthy, um, I just thought it was a great idea, uh, a great opportunity to bring in um, just some information about this new series. So, it's uh, it's called Big Shot. It's a ten episode, one hour series that stars John Stamos as a temperamental college basketball coach who gets fired from his job and must take a teaching and coaching job at an elite all-girls private high school. You know, the tale as old as time, right? The uh, temperamental college basketball coach who has to take a job at an elite all-girls private high school. So the series also is going to star uh, Yvette Nicole Brown, who's best known for her work on the NBC uh, hit series Community. Um it's cool to see John Stamos being involved in this because John Stamos, if you are, you know, if you're a Disney fan or you really pay attention, you know that John Stamos is one of those kind of like um, Neil Patrick Harris and some of these people who is um, just known for being just, uh, you know, a Disney fanatic too, not just someone who, you know, does work for the company. They're a fanatic. So, um, you know, John Stamos loves Disney and Disney loves John Stamos. Um, <clears throat> also in Disney plus star Wars news, um, we have two stories to report. So first is that the trailer for the upcoming Lego Star Wars Holiday Special was released along with the poster for the special. And you can find both of those at the disinsider.com. So we have the poster. You can see it there. And you can also see the uh, trailer for the upcoming special. Um, the special is going to be available on Disney Plus to stream on November 17th. So again, that's the... Uh, <clears throat> Lego Star Wars Holiday Special will be available to stream on Disney Plus on November 17th. The other Disney Plus Star Wars news is that um, it's uh, being reported that season three of The Mandalorian is looking to begin production as early as this month, November 2020. Um, and filming could be uh, expected by the end of the year, which is pretty cool. So season two, which is uh, actually season two of The Mandalorian wrapped 
production prior to COVID-19 closures earlier this year. So season two, you know, it, it got right in under the wire before they closed down the studios. Um, <clears throat> and the actually the second season debuted back on October 30th. And now um, as I'm recording this, they've released two episodes so far. And the third episode from season two is coming this Friday. And, you know, the main point of the story was though, that they are actually starting production for season three and filming could actually begin um, as early as uh this month or next month. So, yep, they're get, just trying to get on that. It's one of the, it's a juggernaut for the Disney company right now. And it's really doing amazing things for Disney Plus. And, you know, it's going to pop up in the, in, in the parks, especially, you know, Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland and Galaxy's Edge at Disney Hollywood Studios in Orlando. So, yeah, uh, I don't think it's a surprise that season three is coming out, but it's cool that they're already starting to get going on production, which is exciting. Over at the Disney films, so two big films uh, are being pushed uh, into 2021 for their release. So as we know, the COVID-19 pandemic has been completely upending the release schedule for industry, so some of the movie industry's largest studios, right? And Disney is no exception. So this past week, it was reported that the expected December 11th theatrical release of the movie Free Guy... Free Guy starring Ryan Reynolds and the December 18th release of the murder mystery Death on the Nile would be a change to sometime 2021. So, um, you know, Death on the Nile is based on an Agatha Christie story and um, the Free Guy is a uh, it's a comedy starring Ryan Reynolds. These are these are expected to be really big hits for the for the company. And so, um, you know, both the movies or it could be big hits. And with the current state of affairs right now, everything going on with, with, with COVID and everything relating to that, um, it's just not conducive right now for big movie, uh, theater audiences. So, um, they've pushed this back to 2021. There's no official release date for these movies in 2021. Um, but even if there was like you guys, it is generally understood that at this point, all release dates from Disney and from all the other major uh, studios are subject to change and not just subject to change, but likely will. So they're kind of suggestions, you know? So we just know for a fact though, that uh free guy and death on the Nile are going to be moved into uh, next year. They're not expect, they will not be released in December. And now in some of the biggest uh, live action, so not like, well, the biggest Disney movie news, it's really funny. Like you can track how some of these stories um, that we do at the Disney Insider, um, how much attention they get through like our Facebook page and our Instagram and our Twitter and nothing, nothing gets more um, engagement than stories about the live action remake of The Little Mermaid. So the much anticipated live action remake of the little mermaid is looking to start production later this month or early next month. So the story is, is that back in March of this year, um, they were about to start filming this movie like days before they shut down the studios for COVID-19. So this thing was like ready to go. And, you know, if you're days away from filming, that means they've got, you know, they got the sets done. They've got the costumes. They've got everyone's done the rehearsals. They've got everything ready to go. And they shut this thing down right uh, days before they were to start filming, which I guess is good that they weren't in the middle of filming, but um, it's kind of exciting to hear that they're going to start production and start uh, filming at the end of this month. Um, so uh, the movie also has gained uh, a lot of attention uh, because the cast was released already and Disney's just expecting this to be a huge hit. Like, and I can tell you the amount of attention it's getting from just our fans alone is amazing. So the film is going to star actress, Hal, a young actress, Hal Bailey, and she's obviously playing the lead, Ariel. Jonah Howard King is uh, playing Prince Eric. And Melissa McCarthy, the comedian, Melissa McCarthy, she'll be playing uh, the sea witch Ursula. Javier Bardem will be King Triton. Jacob Tremblay is playing Flounder. David Diggs is Sebastian. And Aquafina is playing Scuttle. So... Well, all this we already knew, but um, just as a refresher, the film um, is also being directed by Rob Marshall. Um, he's known for Mary Poppins Returns. He did uh, Chicago, which 
you know, that was such a hit. It won the Oscar for Best Picture. And, you know, that movie, that movie musical was, you know, decades in the making, but no director could really figure out how to how to bring it to the big screen. And so when Rob Marshall did that, it was such a mind blowing event. And he's done so many hits since then. I mean, those are the two that I picked, but look him up. Rob Marshall, he's done amazing amount of movie musicals and just really fun movies that you've seen. I guarantee you've seen them. So yeah, so on the music side of things with the live action remake, all of the music from the original animated film is going to be included in this remake, including four new songs. So there's going to be four new songs, one of which is actually going to be a song for Prince Eric. So Eric, Prince Eric is going to get his own song. Um, so the original lyricist, uh, the guy who wrote the lyrics, you know, the lyricist, Howard Ashman, he died in the 1990s due to complications with AIDS. So, you know, he was a lyricist for Little Mermaid. He also was a lyricist for Beauty and the Beast. Um, he did the lyrics for um, Aladdin. He's just, you know, he's amazing. There's actually an amazing documentary about him called Howard on Disney Plus that you need to check out. It's just, it's heart wrenching. And he's just, he's amazing. So, um, Howard Ashman was a lyricist and the composer who writes the music and everything is Alan Menken, Alan Menken. And, and, you know, his, his list is just incredibly long about all the amazing stuff he's done. So uh, without Howard Ashman, Alan Menken needed a lyricist for these four new songs. Right. And so he teamed up with uh, Hamilton, the Hamilton creator, Hamilton writer, actually Hamilton star too, uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda. So, uh, also, Lynn manuel Miranda wrote the music um, for Moana. And uh, so Alan Menken will be composed. Well, he already did compose and wrote the music. He teamed up with Lynn manuel Miranda to do the uh, to write the lyrics. And they wrote the four songs together. Not just are these new songs done, but the new songs and all the original songs have been already recorded, which makes sense, right? Because if they're going to go into filming, they have the music recorded. So, um we know that's recorded. We just, you know, we're all very excited to see what it sounds like, especially these new songs. So, you know, that's some exciting news to look forward to with the Disney company. You know, there's a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, we report on a lot of um, a lot of layoffs or, uh, you know, projects being scrapped. But, um, you know, there are some really big things coming down down the pipeline. And um, I just want to do this. You know, we're pretty much done with the news, but I want to end with this special note. So as as we're recording this podcast, like I said, on the evening of um, November 8th, Sunday, November 8th, the U.S. elections um, have ended. Right. And the news it's going to linger on that for a bit more, but eventually it's going to, and it needs to turn back to the record numbers of new COVID-19 infections that are occurring daily, you know, and it's just, a, you know, it is incumbent on all of us to stay vigilant and listen to public health experts because, you know, you're, you're probably thinking like, what is he talking about? This is a Disney podcast. This is supposed to be about Disney news, but the joy that Disney brings to millions of people through their movies, their streaming series, and especially their theme parks, you know, their cruise lines, all that stuff. It can only continue if we take collection action, collective action to curb the spread of this pandemic. Because, you know, we are not going to be able to get go back into these parks or the parks that are open, you know, they're they're so limited right now. You know, we just don't have that freedom. And so I just really hope that um we can really focus on that moving forward and we can do what we can and hopefully we can make some big, big, big leaps forward in terms of our response because I think um, everyone's ready to get back into the parks. Everyone's ready to go back to the movie theater and uh, people are ready to get some jobs, you know, get their jobs back. And, you know, we want to go buy some stuff too. So, um, you know, myself and those here, myself and those of us here at the Disney beat, along with those of the Disney insider, wish everyone good health and prosperity. And so with that, I just want to say thank you so much. All the stories that I've talked about today can be found on the disinsider.com. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the handle at the disinsider on Facebook by searching for the disinsider. You can follow me, me, follow me, Sean Nyberg, spelled correctly, S-E-A-N-N-Y-B-E-R-G on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Again, that's at Sean Nyberg, all one word, S-E-A-N-N-Y-B-E-R-G. 
Um, I also co-host the Disney podcast, Walt's Apartment, that comes out every Thursday, and the Disney Parks-themed podcast, Extra Magic Hour, which is released every other week on Friday. So check those out, and I just want to thank you guys again for listening, and I'll see you here again next week for another edition of the Disney Beat Podcast. My name is Sean Nyberg, and I hope you have a fantastic week.